ABC News contributor and host of the Law and Crime Network, Brian Buckmeyer. Brian, thanks so much for joining us. First question, Lieutenant Richard Zimmerman, the top homicide detective in Minneapolis, gave powerful testimony today calling Chauvin's restraint of George Floyd, quote, uncalled for, totally unnecessary, and a violation of police policy. How damaging was that testimony to Chauvin? And if what Zimmerman said is all true, would that mean that Chauvin murdered Floyd? Yeah, Byron, it was a pretty big blow. If I was going to use an analogy, I would I would say it's like this. It's a boxing match. The prosecution hit the defense. They fell to the mat, but the defense got right back up. It was a pretty big blow. I don't think this proves murder, though. What it does show is that Chauvin stepped outside of his procedure, stepped outside of the policies, and therefore did something wrong. The question is, what is that wrong? And the medical examiner testimony and the cross-examination of that medical examiner is going to show us whether or not murder is going to be made out here. Okay, now let's drill down a bit more on those moments leading up to Chauvin's uh, pressing his knee on Floyd's neck for nine plus minutes. Under Minneapolis police rules at the time, what level of force was allowed and at what point did Chauvin cross the line based on the testimony and evidence we've heard so far? Yeah, Byron, so at this point, it, it's kind of a sliding scale. Mm. So. When George Floyd is put into handcuffs, taken out of the vehicle and put on the floor, even with the kicking back and forth, maybe some force should be used, but not deadly force. And that's what Derek Chauvin, at least what the witness said Derek Chauvin did when he put his knee on George Floyd's neck. He should have been one step or maybe even two steps back from deadly force. And therefore, when he put his knee on the first time and then left it there for remaining nine minutes and 29 seconds, that's when he's crossed over the line. And he did so for almost nine and a half minutes. So that's going to be very damaging for the defense. Now, you, you made this point last night on Nightline, and you, you touched upon it here. I want to ask you about it more specifically. It seems like this, this, this trial will come down to the prosecution saying it's about the knee and the neck, and the defense saying it's about the drugs in his system. Exactly. Uh, we're talking about the difference of cause of death and manner of death. Now, so far, both have been fighting over the cause, whether it's the knee or the drugs in his system. I think for the defense, it's going to be really hard when the conversation shifts to manner of death. There's only five different types of manner of death, homicide, accident, natural, suicide, or undetermined. If the medical examiners thought this was an overdose, they would have called it an accident. But three out of three medical examiners who looked at these uh, findings all said it was a homicide, which means it was death by another, not by an overdose. And Brian, a final question. How likely is it you think Chauvin will testify? Certainly he doesn't have to, but is there mounting pressure for him to testify? And what's the benefit, to him, if any, to taking the stand? So up until Lieutenant Zimmerman was cross-examined, I thought he's not taking the stand. He's not going to. And that could probably change again down the line. But when I heard Eric Nelson cross-examine Lieutenant Zimmerman, something kind of made my ears stick up. He was asking the lieutenant about general ideas as to whether or not an officer can use force. You might have heard him bring up the fact that you can improvise by using a paint can to defend yourself. And then he juxtaposed that with, well, you're not really on the ground. You're not really in the trenches. You're just someone's boss who thinks about this academically. For uh, Chauvin to win out here in the case, someone would have to take the stand and say, yeah, I was there on the ground seeing things as they occurred and not someone who's looking at a camera or in the, in the office looking at this. And the only person who can make that connection would be Derek Chauvin himself. So that cross-examination made it sound like he was either laying the groundwork or testing the waters for Derek Chauvin to testify. Whether or not he's going to, I don't know, but it kind of looks like he may. Hmm. Brian, Muck, Brian Buckmeyer, thank you so much. My pleasure. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.